Hello, I'm Tim Frazier coming to you from the LG Digital Studio at Georgetown University School of Continuing Studies. In Focus Today Pandemics, I'm joined by Tim Manning, the Director of the Washington Operations at the Pacific Disaster Center. Welcome, Tim. Hi, Tim. It's good to see you. Good to see you. So the first question I have for you is, can you talk a little bit about the current state of emergency management in the U.S. and around the world? Well, I think what we've seen in the last, say, five, ten years globally in emergency management is definitely an, an upswing in the focus paid by governments and by people um, in communities all around the world. Uh, I think it's been brought into focus through a number of different catastrophic disasters in about the last decade, things like the, the Boxing Day tsunami uh, in, in the Indian Ocean, Hurricane Katrina, and name all the hurricanes afterwards. Uh, the tsunami in Japan, the, that's brought a focus, uh, a, a resolve onto governments that I think we saw evident in the Sendai uh, meeting, uh, in the Sendai Global Disaster Meeting, which has brought governments to the table, uh, reporting and, and building on their capabilities to deal with crises. And that's been reflected in the profession. We're seeing more and more people drawn into emergency management or disaster risk reduction, uh, civil contingencies, whatever you call it in different parts of the world. Uh, we've definitely seen growth. We've seen, I think we've more importantly, attention paid by the public and attention paid by local officials. And here in the United States, uh, I think I've seen the same thing. Uh, we're seeing more and more people choose to go into emergency management early in their career, uh, study it in undergraduate and postgraduate uh, schools, and bring a level of professionalism to disaster management that uh, you know, we haven't necessarily seen in the past. We have a very, very dedicated core of emergency managers in the United States uh, that have all come to the profession through different paths. Uh, I myself came up as a scientist and a, and a firefighter. Uh, but now I think we're seeing more and more people uh, bring a level of inquisitiveness and a level of, of empirical rigor and, and science to it uh, that brings, that's been generating better policy uh, and better recommendations for the public. Oh, that's great. A more professional field means more professional results, I'm sure. So along that line, can you talk a little bit about the role that emergency management plays in relationship to current health crisis that we're seeing? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, emergency management, I like to describe as uh, the coordinators, right? The, the, the emergency manager, the professionals in, in this field, our job is to, is to support the people that are in charge of whatever that crisis might be. And in the case of a hurricane, uh, it's the governor and the mayors of the affected area. Emergency management's there to coordinate all the different activities. And in, and in a health crisis, it's really no different. Uh, in this case, still the governors are in charge, but you have public health, uh, you have uh, epidemiologists, you have a number of public health officials who have activities that need to be done to support uh, the public, both to you know, provide supportive care, to provide critical care, uh, and to kind of keep society running. Uh, emergency management as a profession has been working very, very closely with the public health community uh, for decades uh, in anticipation of, of just a disease and outbreak like this, like the COVID-19 uh, outbreak. Um, in the 2009 H1N1 pandemic, uh, I was at FEMA at the time. Uh, we were an integral role within the National Security Council working with the Centers for Disease Control and the he Department of Health and Human Services, supporting governors and their health departments in that planning and response. And our jobs now are, are really no different. Uh, society needs to keep functioning. We need emergency management can bring the experience and the mechanisms to the table to provide for emergency uh, support to healthcare, food and water, uh, emergency transport, all the things, all the complex things that come with a crisis. Uh, emergency management, uh, that's what we do for a living. And so uh, this is no different. I know that you know you talked about sort of the progress we've made in the field and the professionalization that we've made in the field and, and overcoming some of the challenges and gaps that we have had in the past, but I know that we still have some of those gaps and some of those challenges. So could you talk a little bit about uh, what we could do to be better prepared in the future? Well, I think as a society, there are many things that we can do to be better prepared for, for any kind of crisis. Um, one is, to, is you know, to, the recognition that we are all in this together. Uh, there's not an emergency management uh, group that sits separate from the public. We are all part of our communities. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not an activity that we need to do as emergency managers separate from what the rest of the community needs to do. Now, that said, we all need to be better prepared in our homes, uh, in our businesses, continuity plans for our employment. I mean, we're seeing now with the, 
with a uh, burgeoning uh, pandemic uh, viral outbreak, the, the importance of having continuity plans and being able to continue your operations from remote sites, mm. um, provide educational opportunities uh, not in the classroom, to be able to not have to travel to meetings and be able to do that and keep commerce running. But there's other things like having the, enough food and water uh, on hand to make it through crises. Because fortunately, we're seeing panic buying now yeah. in many communities. Um, if people were more prepared, more well-educated, understood the impacts of supply chain disruptions, uh, there'd be maybe a little less uh, last minute kind of scrambling to be ready for, for an emergency. And then as, as emergency managers, I think we just need to be better continue to build on our ability to communicate with the public, communicate complex, complex risk information to the public so they understand what's coming and what they need to do, mm. uh, and to elected officials, be able to communicate complex scientific information to elected officials so that they can adequately communicate to the public and quell fear, calm panic, uh, and result in a, uh, you know, a coordinated kind of community-based response to whatever crisis is happening. Thank you, Tim, for that. So I have a question that's not on the books, but uh, so how would a program like Georgetown's Emergency Disaster Management Program help with uh, some of the challenges you've talked about? Well, you know, emergency management is, in the 21st century, is facing an a increasingly complex world. I mean, on top of a changing climate with more severe uh, storms, more intense events, we have a geometrically increasing population and increasing urbanization, all of which coincide to, in, to present a, a much more complex risk picture than we've seen in the last few hundred years. A uh, program like, like Georgetown, uh, where students are coming and studying not just how to respond to a disaster, but what causes them, what are societal uh, factors that result in risk, um, what are the the things that can be done in the public policy sphere to make safer communities, uh, that's a level of education that people are bringing to the profession that we've never seen before. Right. So it's, this program is, is a fantastic place for people already in the profession to get better, and it's better for the profession and better for society, for people having gone through it and being smarter when they get in those roles. Thank you, Tim, so much. I really appreciate it. It's good to have a conversation with you. Uh, thanks to everyone out there for watching. Stay tuned for more from LG Digital Studio at Georgetown's SES.